Megan Carmichael with a good start. It looks like Ernesto Fonseca, but it's lucky. He was buried in the middle of the pack, and instead of worrying about going to that first turn and throwing elbow, he stops on a dive, hugs the inside barrel, and man, out from the hole. One. Kyle Lewis is going to take that Butterfinger Grip hole shot award, but it's James Stewart leading Ricky Carmichael now. It looks like when the back in third. Also, Reed, we have the best field. The top four are the riders we've been waiting for. We've already seen that Stewart's the fastest guy in the track in the heat races, but can he do it for 20 laps? Oh. I don't know. He looked like he was sweating in that end of that eight laps. Ricky makes a mistake, and look at Reed's right all over him. Look at him closing in the gap there. His name is Bubba, and there's a lot of Bubba fans in the stands. And Chad Reed looks really good. Losing a little bit of rhythm right there. Yeah. Just like in your dudes and don'ts. Don't worry, though. You got to pick it back up. Don't like work. that. Ricky's just looking uncomfortable. Will kind of makes a mistake, but just like that, he just closed the gap all over James Stewart. Man, this is it. Now, in the heat race, it was completely rolled opposite. Stewart closed the gap real quick up on Carmichael and takes away. But now, Carmichael closes the gap up on 259. Stewart takes the middle road. Carmichael's just behind. He's biding his time. I'm going to tell you what. Kevin Windham back and forth, not too far behind as well. They are the cream of the crop. There's no question about it. 250 Supercross. And now Reed closes in on Carmichael. Okay, it's something we can see right now is this track is completely day and night different than what we saw in the heat races. The track was Perfectly smooth, perfectly ground. Wow. It is deteriorating. They have to race the track right now more than they can race each other. Outside is Chad Reed. Watch out. He's trying to set up on the inside. Oh, cases it right there. If he there, there at the beginning of the race, it could have been probably been the best thing for him because all it did was clear his head. He thought about it. it just got rid of everything that he was worried about after the heat race. He said, man, I just got to go out and focus on the track. This is it. This is what we've been waiting for for the last two months. I think that's an understatement. Denny Stevenson all over him. Chad Reed is going nuts out there trying to get by Ricky Carmichael. There's an onboard camera. He may win this race. See, something I think that might be a, a, a detrimental to Ricky Carmichael right now is if Reed stays all over him, Ricky will be unable to take the fastest lines he needs to. And oh. he goes down just like that. He drops the front end of the rut and just folds and he goes down. Oh, we see Ricky, now he's going to jump in. He drops the front end and that thing's just going to tuck and just throw him down. He was looking ahead of that section instead of looking at where he's going to land. Let's look at it again, different angle. He's going to drop the front. He's already kind of sitting down the front end just tucks and just like that he's down the very front. characteristic with Carmichael there's the onboard James Bubba Stewart going through the wolves one more time he oh, like, oh, oh he just crashed I can't believe it I thought he'd be out front he could just kind of settle to a pace and down Stewart goes way out in front he had about a 4.8 second lead when he goes down now he's in third just laps here at the Citrus Bowl the 250 main event with Chad Reed out in front number 22 Ricky Carmichael the Makita Suzuki in second number four and the 250 Nine Kawasaki of James Stewart Jr. in third. Whoops, his fourth gear pin drops the front end. The bars are ripped from his hands, and man, down he goes. What a violent crash. Coming into that whoop section, having to fight the rut, a deteriorating track. The last lap, white flag is out for Chad Reed, originally from Australia, now there at the top of the list. I mean, what an animal. I mean, I, these guys, these three guys are all animals in my book. But Chad Reed, he's exercised that demon at number four. He used to haunt him at night. He kept working with Jeff Spencer. He failed to, to just settle. He failed to just go, I'm going to be a second place guy. Win tonight. That win in Orlando will go to Chad Reed. He wins San Diego, Daytona, and now put Orlando on the list. And win them with a great jump out of the center.
tackle by about 50 yards, and behind him by about the same distance is Chad Reed. That is the top three. Stewart sits in sixth place, and he is moving up quickly on Mike Morocco. And there you see the battle. You see him blitzing through the whoops. He's going to go to the inside. Look at him. You see the tire just start to wash a bit. The dirt is very the outside. Oh, this is quite a development here. Three monsters of Supercross all together. James Stewart trying to work hard to catch back up to his pack, but he is way out of the picture. Coming in that straightaway, so he is about 200 plus yards behind our leader. Your leader, number 14, Kevin Winder, brings it around. Ricky Carmichael sits in second. Chad Reed in third. They are all about equal distance between each other, Cameron. He has been racing hard and fast. And here comes Reed to the inside. for Reed to get out front, break away, try and get by these guys as quickly as possible. Obviously, that's not going to be easy, but he needs to gap these guys before these guys can get through the field. Suzuki, quickly. the yellow number four, and there's James Stewart coming to the inside. Stewart Carmichael, his spot away. Carmichael gave Stewart way too much respect right there, and then just blows right back through him, but passing through the whoops right there. I, I personally, I don't think Reed's making enough happen right now. He's not getting away from Carmichael. Look, and Ivan Tedesco kills it. Yeah, and now, how quickly can they reel in Ernesto Fonseca? And then the top three will be setting sail in what should be a tremendous fight for the win here tonight in Anaheim. Fonseca goes down to the rhythm section, thrown up over the bar, down just like that, out of the lead. Still gets back up in fifth, but now the big three are up front. Reed, Carmichael, and Stewart. Chad Reed has the lead. Wow. It has been the most highly anticipated season of Supercross racing ever, and this is why everybody expected to see these three riders battling it out on sold out Anaheim Stadium. Last time they did that, the Angels were in the World Series. For a Supercross, no problem when you get racing like this here in the birthplace of Supercross. This racetrack is how tough it is, and they're making these massive obstacles look like they're just simple little things in the way. 
through the rhythm section, clearing the triple. Elmo enemy, he can now kind of settle in and go, hey, I'm running fast enough pace. He can feel comfortable enough to go, this is what I need to keep doing. I still got 14 more laps to go, of course, but I'm confident with the pace I can I'm putting on these guys. That's because Chad Reed's normal, regular mechanic, Darren Sorensen, broke his ankle in a fall on his own motorcycle. So Alan Olsen filling in, and he's doing something right tonight, guys. Chad Reed leading this race on lap six. Well, Ricky Carmichael's got some new suspension pieces as well, and they've done a lot of last song before Anaheim, and it seems to be working on his bike as well because he's closing, and that's exactly what that signboard says. He's feeling it right now. He just cased the rhythm section, coming out of the tunnel jump. Carmichael just made the pass. Will we see James Stewart turn up the heat on his number seven, Kawasaki? Have we seen everything out of him yet? Oh, there goes Carmichael to the whoops. We talked about how vicious those whoop section could be, and it has just reached up Reed back to the front. Unbelievable. Another Anaheim opener that Ricky Carmichael will not win. Chad Reed, James both saw what just happened to Carmichael. They're like, now it's down to two. It's like we saw in Canada just a month ago. He's biding his time. He knows he doesn't have to ride over his head. He's going to sit and watch and see what Reed's got, and he's going to turn up the wig a little bit more. I think we're just watching a little bit of what James Stewart has available. Watch that section those guys are right doing. We have not seen him do that all night long. They used to just double in. Now they're tripling in and tripling all the way through the entire rhythm section. They're putting down lap times we have not seen all night long. Rocco just in front of him before he's back on the podium here tonight. Meanwhile, it's Chad Reed out in front, but for how long? Here comes Stewart. Reed bangs into the side of him. Oh, tremendous side-by-side -side competition, but it's Stewart who comes out with the number one spot. James Stewart last season, obviously, we saw it in Canada last month, and just like that, he lets Carmichael make a mistake, doesn't even have to pass, and moves in a second, and then just eats up Chad Reed in a couple seconds, Chad makes a mistake, takes over the lead. Today, he said, you know what, I, I took those two wins in Canada, I feel really good coming into this round, I've trained very hard, i peaked for the right time of the year for this championship chase, but Ricky Carmichael is still the man. That's great superstar, and if he keeps running like this, he could run away with this championship. What? For 2006, and James Stewart is coming on to win the biggest race of the year. The Anaheim opener goes to James Stewart on a tremendous performance. Chad Reed on the factory Yamaha is going to be right in the thick of the points chase. Carmichael and Stewart, or Stewart Carmichael. We talked about how beaten up Chad Reed is. He's toughing it out. He's going for the whole shot. Given everything he's got, it's 20 laps here on that shoulder. He can rest tomorrow. Look at Stewart through the works for the lead. Second place at Anaheim one. Here comes Carmichael on the inside of the number four. Gonna be Carmichael's last chance to win Anaheim one here. He needs to get by Chad Reed quick because Stewart has been so fast all day. I think he's setting it up right here, Ralph. Through the sand. Boy, you can hear the crowd come to life. Everybody's still on their feet. I'm loving this. This is what they all came to see. Ooh, big mistake by Stewart. Wow, look at Carmichael's backside of that motorcycle. Flopping him. Take second place. Carmichael trying to the inside of Reed as they come into the whoops. Look for a pass here. Got him. Boy, look at Reed. Woo! Reed is really giving him everything he's got. This is great action. It doesn't do any good for them to do this, but you have to establish the position in ball turns. Carmichael, of course, the only rider to win AMA Supercross titles on three different brands of motorcycles, doing it on a variety of machines. Carmichael, it looks like, actually, he's going to take the lead, and Reed is going to move to second. That'll put Stewart back to third. Yes, they're loving it. Remember, Ricky Carmichael has never won Anaheim one. Stewart gets back around Reed for second place. And this is just what Stewart didn't need to do. He fell again. He, he was on the ground. What's going to happen? Over the finish line and just washes the front end. The gas. But as you said, he's having to ride twice as hard to get there. Well, Carmichael won in the battle, and uh, 
He's got it coming right now. I'm so stiff that that's why the machine gets gets through there that much better. But what he gives, what he makes up in the whoops, he gives away in front end traction by making it so stiff. He's gonna come to the inside right here. Clean move, but Ricky triples out of it and retakes the lead. That's that move he's been doing all night. Going Look at that's the Bubba Scrub right there, taking the lead again. Well, these guys aren't hitting 55s yet, but they're hitting 57 lap, 57 second lap times right now. That's pretty good considering the track's getting really slippery. The Bubba Scrub is a move that James Stewart came up with. He's out of the turn, and then he just soaks up that right there. And watch over this triple. He just whips the bike sideways, stays about four feet lower over the jump. And his, his teammate, there's James Stewart on his final lap. Carmichael in second, Chad Reed, the other injured rider we talked about in third tonight. How about Stewart there? He's, 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 in, he's so comfortable. He's doing one-handers through the rhythm section before the triple. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter where. He's, he's got this track wired. James Stewart celebrating as he passes the mechanics area, and James Stewart wins in a high. Teammates out front with the lead. Chad Reed, James Stewart, and Ricky Carmichael running one, two, and three. I tell you what, this is just uh, what the fans are looking for here, the top three fastest qualifiers. Yeah, but he's definitely raced himself into shape, and he keeps getting stronger, and the pain is being relieved each week. Right now, this is just what he needed to do. Chad Reed, he's got to be feeling great right now. About this. Oh, and the track was pretty rutted up there in uh, Toronto when he won that event, and he's... Like I said, he's, uh, he's been tough. He's been grinding it out here. And that night in Toronto, a lot of friction. There's been a lot of bar banging. And right behind these two comes Ricky Carmichael on the Suzuki. These two get together and go down. Carmichael's in perfect position to steal the win. Yeah, Stewart's putting on a great charge here. Now, you know Chad Reed, he can feel that pressure. He knows that Stewart's all over him right now. They can feel the crowd. Since the crowd, when they start hyping, you don't know what's going on behind you. Here comes Stewart, hard to the inside. Here comes number four sneaking in there. He knows, he doesn't. Oh, big mistake by Stewart. And here comes Reed to capitalize on the inside. And Carmichael closing on the inside. The racing left to go. Carmichael off oh. the track. He went right into the tough blocks, Jeff, and that cost him a ton of time. Luckily, he saved that. He jumped to the inside. Of the well, I think so, and it seems like his uh, shoulder injury and all that is, is pretty good. He's put in some pretty clean laps when Stewart Carmichael both made mistakes in the rhythm section in the last lap. And now, look at this. Oh, already at lap six, they're coming into traffic. Stewart is behind. He's going to see Chad's line. Oh, and Sorby gets in the way of Reed. And there goes Stewart. That was unfortunate. Down front now. You know, I've been a little... Oh! oh! Stewart throws it away! And three stumbles getting by. Here comes Carmichael in the second. And the bike stays running. Comes out. Something happened right there. The bike stalled for some reason when he jumped behind you of the race up in Canada, up in Toronto, where Chad kept it. He limited his mistakes, and the other guys are trying so hard. But... Boy, Carmichael feet off the pegs and everything. What do to get around Reed? Is it limiting those mistakes? He has to limit his mistakes. Carmichael feels that he is stronger physically than any other rider out there. Reed not making it easy. Here he comes. Close racing. Carmichael just jumped to the inside there. Oh, oh. Reed! Chad Reed throws it away. Oh, big mistake by Reed. That's the one mistake he's made on He comes in here, just hits a slick spot, wet spot, and just launches the bike. Big mistake. Working so hard in his final season. Not even going to run the full year. You would think most people would just hang out and eat a lot of ho-hos and relax and the bars. Next mistake, he triples out, comes up way short. 
Kind of stalls it. Oh, yeah, definitely stalled the engine there. Very lucky because these big 450s, usually when they stall, they're almost impossible to restart. Yeah, once the engine heats up, it definitely gets a little bit tougher to start the bike. Ricky earlier tonight, before the racing started, and uh, he was feeling good, feeling lucky. Jeff, he's riding one hand off those bars a lot. Woo, he's got to be careful not making that mistake. It's so tough to see number four out front. His final stop on his farewell tour here in San Francisco. Here in this famous ballpark. Ricky Carmichael, the winner in AT&T Park. For a bit of arm pump tonight. Oh, dude. For ten, the 10th the ten lap on, I was so tight and uh, almost went off the track. I'm the only guy that didn't fall out of the three of us, and uh, I take it any way I can get it. They definitely made it uh, easier than it should have been for me tonight, but uh, it was just a wild race, wild for the fans, wild for TV, and uh, that's what we need to do. Second place tonight. <laughs> Uh, you, you, besides the, like the lappers and probably the crashes and besides all that, it was a good race. You know, I had fun. I actually, I, I have to say this was the funnest race I've probably ever ridden in my life. I felt super good tonight, and man, I hate losing like that. You know. I,